to Cahawk Stadium here on the campus of Collinsville High School. It is time to kick off the 2023-2024 season here on the Cahawk Sports Network. My name is Todd Duke, and I am glad that you're with us for another year of Cahawk Sports. Should be a good year, and we're going to start it off with a little soccer action, and we're going to start it off with a little pregame show brought to you tonight by Elsie's Pub in Caseyville. Great food, great drinks, and great services served up daily at Elsie's Pub in Caseyville. Elsie's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right up the street from us here. Call in for carryout orders at Elsie's Pub, 618-855-9077. So your Collinsville Kayaks are hosting the Triad Knights to start off their season here on a very hot and steamy night at Kayhawk Stadium. We were wondering for a while if we we're gonna get this game in because a lot of things have been canceled this past week because feels like temperatures have been around 110 to 115. Some places have registered 120 degrees. I've never seen a dew point of 80 degrees in my life until this week, and we registered three days in a row of dew points at 80 or just a little bit higher. So it is a hot and steamy one. On the other microphone is none other than Mr. Brett Borm. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Todd. How are you? I'm uh, sweating. You are sweating. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're you're, you're drenched. As I you know. said, your big toe is I think sweating. Every part of my body's sweating. Even my big toe is sweating. But it's hot. So, uh, how uh, do you remember back in your playing days dealing with temperatures like this? Um, yes. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to say I, we always play through the summer. These boys now they don't typically play through the summer. They play spring season. They have summer workouts, and then they come into their, their fall high school season. We played throughout the summer, and it was hot. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. I mean, this is this is hot. I wouldn't want to be out there. Yeah, I, I don't want to be out here either. I mean, I do want to be here, but right. it's a little steamy. We asked for an air conditioner in the press box, but our, so far our, uh, our attempts have been denied. We're going to talk to Clay Smith at halftime, too, so I'm going to give him a live plug on the air and see if he can get us an air conditioner because he'll be on the spot then. Absolutely. <laughs> if anybody can do it, though, he could. He can. All right, that is Brett Bourne. My name is Todd Duke. And we'll get you up to date on what's going on here. Collinsville, their head coach, Rob Lugge, in his seventh year. He has a record of 102, 35 losses, and five ties. He'll be opposed by Triad, who has their uh, head coach, Jim Jackson, in his 11th season. 
163 wins, 63 losses, and 17 ties. Chaos, they're coming off a 17-4-2 campaign a year ago after a uh, late season injury to perennial all-conference starter Adam Reiniger put a kink in that year's postseason plan. Collinsville beat Quincy in last year's regional semifinal before losing to the uh, Edwardsville Tigers 2-0 in the regional championship games. Hawks uh, lost seven players to graduation, including stalwarts Bryson Bodie, Jimmy Crowder, and Justin Heyman, but CHS only lost eight goals from those seven returners. And their uh, top two goal scorers from last year, and Adam Reiniger and Trey Peterson, will return. Collinsville will also have a uh, new keeper kind of for the year as senior Nick Horace is concentrating on just basketball. That puts senior Robbie Freeman and his counterpart, sophomore Brayton Henson, between the pipes this year. And it'll be Henson who will get the start here in game number one. The Knights, they went 20-4 and four last year and went all the way to the Class 2A Super Sectional where they fell 2-1 to one to Chatham Glenwood. By the way, that's Collinsville's opponent on Saturday. Triad graduated six from last year's program, and while Collinsville graduated seven and only lost eight goals of their 57 scored, well, Triad six grads accounted for 48 goals out of their 95 goals scored, including two of the top three goal scorers in Toby Sutter and Jake Stewart. They do return number two scorer, Wyatt Sutter. He scored 16 goals last year. Triad also graduated their number one goalkeeper from a year ago in Max Rader. He allowed just 23 goals in 24 games as they will counter with a junior named Cortland Delamano, and we do not have any uh, stats on him because he did not play at the varsity level last year. Had a chance to catch up with Collinsville head coach Rob Lugie just a little bit ago to talk to him about this year's team and this year's first opponent in triad. We'll pass that conversation on to you next as the LC Pubs pregame show continues here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than Elsie's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, Elsie's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayhawk fans before, after, or even during Kayhawk games. Elsie's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. Elsie's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Kayhawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Kayhawk fans' pub of choice. Diamonds for Kayhawks is a facility improvement project to develop a baseball, softball, and football slash soccer field for CHS students and our communities to utilize. The project includes two baseball fields, two softball fields, a soccer slash football field, concession stand, bathrooms, and parking. The development of this facility will benefit the band, PE classes, baseball team, softball team, and soccer team with a centralized location, ease of access, and an eye-catching complex. Please contact A.D. Clay Smith to donate to this project or visit the Collinsville Area Community Foundation website to make your tax-deductible donation today. At Visionary Wealth Advisors, we empower you to see your future before it's your future. To create your inheritance to build your vision, to anticipate the known and unknown, and to find potential in both, and build new dawns. Visionary Wealth Advisors. Visit Brad Keen at his Collinsville office at 106 North Clinton or call 618-467-8420. Do you have a big land improvement project that requires some outside help? Call Petroff Trucking Company. The Petroff companies have been shaping the metro area since 1975. Family owned and operated, Petroff Trucking Company can do the job and do it right. Hauling, excavating and grading, they do that and more. Petroff Companies also has roll-off dumpster rentals. They also specialize in dirt and rock sales. 
Petroff Trucking Company can help you develop your land for your needs. Petroff Trucking Company. Check out their website, PetroffTrucking.com, or give them a call, 618-797-6100. Petroff Trucking Company, shaping the metro area since 1975. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Cahawk fans, before, after, or even during Cahawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Cahawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Cahawk fans pub of choice. And we welcome you back into the LC Pubs pregame show here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Game number one of our 13th year covering the Collinsville Cahawk sports scene. And we start off with a little soccer on a very hot and steamy night here at Cahawk Stadium. And joining us now is Collinsville head coach Rob Lugie. First of all, coach, uh, tell me about summer break, man. Did you get to do anything fun over the summer? I did not. Um, <laughs> I was here, what, three days a week, and then we are remodeling our house. So that took no vacations. So that leads me to my next question, which I'm guessing is going to be a no. You haven't taken in any City SC games yet? No, I've been to I've been to four, uh, two here, and then two, one in Nashville and one in Chicago. I guess those were like weekend trips. Uh, but yeah, they're great. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Tell me about the experience, man. You enjoying that part of it? Yeah, no, it's a blast. I will say the the games here in St. Louis were a lot more fun than Nashville and Chicago. Um, the, the crowd, just the whole thing was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, my son and I went the, the, I was at the second home game when it was like 12 degrees outside or whatever. No, and we actually made it the entire game. I was really surprised. Probably wish it was 12 degrees right now. All right. Uh, let's move on to bigger and better things. The start of the year. And wouldn't you know it, it's so hot and steamy that your schedule, I'm sure your practice schedule and everything has changed. We know that tonight's game has. So tell us about how the summer's going. You know, summer training was good. Um, got a lot accomplished. Um, tryouts went well. Um, you know, last week we went 6 a.m. right before school started, and then, you know, now we're back. This week was, you know, you have to think on your feet. Luckily, you know, TSA is available, so, you know, we just make a couple phone calls and, and try and get in there as much as possible. All right, tell us about the uh, makeup of this year's team. As with every year, you lose players to graduation. You guys lost six players off of last year's team, but you bring back your top goal scorers. Yeah, you know, we bring back – a lot of experience, you know, is, was it six or seven of the seniors have been on varsity since they were freshmen and there's the, the boys, you know, they know what's expected. Um, so hopefully we can continue that with them and then, you know, work in some of our younger players, some of our juniors that didn't get it maybe as much, you know, time, game, game time as they were hoping last year. And, you know, we have a solid group of sophomores that hopefully we can, you know, work them in. All right. The top of that list is uh, senior Adam Reiniger. Uh, dude, like all city, all state, all county, he's pretty much all everything. Tell me what makes him so special besides his lineage. You know, I like to, anybody asks me about Adam, I like to, first, he's like just an amazing kid. Um, you know, he's he's one of the hardest working people I know. He's quiet, he just does his job, uh, and he just has a knack for the goal. Um, any, any, anywhere around the 18, uh, they better be prepared for a shot. Trey Peterson was second in goals. He's back with you again this year. Talk to me about Trey. Yeah, Trey's, Trey's ability to get up and down the wing is uh, it's kind of hard to beat, you know, you know his cross country, his, his ability to run uh, helps him and helps us a lot. You know, it, it allows us to stretch the field, um, be able to take people wide and down the line, which opens up space for everybody else. Talk to me about your defense. I know pretty much it all uh, begins and ends with Dane Compton, who's been doing this, as you mentioned, for a while now. Dane is one of the most solid defenders I've ever coached. Um, he just kind of understands and sees the game, um, and, you know, and typically he's back there by himself um, just kind of directing things. Uh, you know, we're fortunate to have him and his experience back there leading, 
you know, uh, a junior who's coming back to play for us and a sophomore. So, you know, with Dane back there, I think we're still going to be okay. New year and another change in your keeper area, man. It seems like every year you're talking about somebody new between the pipes. So tell us about your uh, two goalkeepers this year. Well, you know, you know, lucky enough for us, um, Braden Henson, while he couldn't play last year, he was around. Um, he got to see what the high school experience was about. Um, he was able to just kind of be around the team and get to know everybody. And then we have Robbie. Robbie Freeman is – he is a solid, solid kid who just – wants to get better every single day. Uh, we're fortunate to have two quality goalies that, you know, we can put in at any time, and, you know, I don't think we'll miss a beat. You have uh, Braden Henson, the sophomore, starting tonight. Tell me what went into that decision. They've both done a really good job. You know, for us, I think it's all about preparing for conference play. Um, so seeing what he has, um, I thought I thought very highly of him last year as a freshman. Um, and it was unfortunate that he got hurt. Um, so I really want to see him kind of, you know, see what he can do in the actual game. And, and hopefully he just kind of takes it and kind of runs with it. Game number one tonight, what do you want to see out of your guys? Playing simple, moving the ball, um, just – Everything that we have talked about well, for the seniors over the last four years, for us, nothing has really changed. We have a specific style we like to play. Um, if we can master that style, um, play as simple as possible, you know, I, I like our chances in most games we have. Got triad tonight to start the season off with. You guys got them by one goal last year. They graduated seven, but they graduated a lot of their goal scorers last year. So what, what do you make of this year's triad squad? They, well, you know, they also, but they did bring back like six starters, I think it was. Um, and what the the Suter kid, uh, the other, the younger one, you know, he scored 16 goals last year. Like he's, 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 you know, he's got it in him to put the ball in the net. So we have to just, we have to defend well, um, limit their chances, and, you know, and then just, you know, counter and, you know, just finish. Thanks for the visit, coach. Good luck. No problem. Thank you. That is Rob Lugie, your Collinsville Kayak head coach here at the uh, soccer game against Triad. We'll have the uh, starters for both of these squads coming up right after a break here on the LC Pubs pregame show here on the Kayak Sports Looking Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville, just blocks from Collinsville High School. LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayak fans before, after, or even during Kayak games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Kayhawk games live as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from All Pro Tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Kayhawk fans' pub of choice. Hi, Purple and White fans. This is Dan Mode, class of 1989. I'm with New American Funding. Myself and New American Funding are proud sponsors of Kayhawk Athletics. As we have great coaches at CHS on all the courts, fields, and tracks, we like to coach you through the home buying process and refinance process. If there's ever anything we can do, I can be reached at 618-973-5343 or www.danmodeloans.com. Let's support our student athletes at CHS. They deserve the best. Thank you for your time and go Kayhawks. Pack Mail of Collinsville, locally owned and operated by Ryan Combs. Pack Mail can ship anything, anywhere. They treat you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. Pack Mail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate controlled self storage. Visit Pack Mail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online at weshipstlouis.com or call Pack Mail at 346 4884. And once again, we welcome you back into the broadcast booth here. Very steamy broadcast booth here at Kayhawk Stadium. My name is Todd Duke. Brett Borm is along with us as well. And here are your starters. We'll begin with the Triad Knights. In goal, you will find Cortland Delamano. In front of Mr. Delamano, we have Gibson Hunt, Brendan Smith, Charlie Gintiman, Wyatt Sutter, Braden Gilmore, Landon Trabdicek, 
Drew Noy, Lance Stauffer, Jacob Delaney, and Corey Warren in goal for Collinsville. Is their sophomore goalkeeper, Brayden Henson, in front of him, you will find Dane Compton, Trey Peterson, Adam Reiniger, Landon Mahat, Ty Starko, Chris Munoz, TJ Carter, Braden Borm, Joey Morales, and Juan Carlos Doria. We bring Brett Borm back into the conversation now. Your comments on the uh, coach's interview there, sir. You know, it's always good to hear Coach Lugie's insights, uh, especially coming into a season straight from summer workouts and, you know, him having an opportunity to watch the boys all summer long. You know, as you know, this is my son's senior year, and uh, this could be the last ride. Yeah. And I just want to enjoy it. Yeah, well, I hear you. Hopefully you will. Should be a good season. Hopefully everybody can stay healthy. I know last year at the end of the year with Reiner getting hurt, that was – that was, a, that was a bummer, right, heading into the playoffs. Absolutely, man. I think that's a totally different game against Edwardsville if we have Adam Reiniger fully healthy. And, uh, you know, we, we, would have, we would have advanced, no doubt in my mind. Yep. All right, we are underway. Collinsville, of course, out there in the purple. They have some new jerseys this year. Got a little grayish, purplish on the sleeves. And they have their numbers in white. Got a little white trim down the shorts as well. Triad, they're out there in their white uniforms. And their numbers on the backs and the fronts are in red. Collinsville, of course, trying to shoot down at the other end. Right now, Triad trying to create a little bit of offense down here, and that ball will go across the end line, and we will have a goal kick restart here by Braden Henson as chasing that ball all the way down the field was T.J. Carter, and he was on the move along with Corey Warren there. Warren trying to get himself in position to get a crossover there but could not complete it. Yeah, you're going to see, so T.J. Carter coming in, starting it right back in place of Braden Borm, where he's played for the last two years. Borm's kind of stepped into that Bodie role of last year. And we're going to get to see what T.J.'s got. He's going to have his hands full with um, the suitor, uh, White suitor, and, and Gibson Hunt in the middle. There is Trey Peterson. Peterson cuts it across the middle, now heads back the other way, trying to feed a pass all the way up for, who is 24? I don't even have a 24 on my roster. Always happens this Juan time of year. Carlos. Juan Carlos okay, he's, he's on my uh, roster as number 23. Here is Adam Reiniger. He wears number four. I know that number anywhere. Reiniger is being double teamed over here on this near sideline. Gets it out to Peterson. Peterson tries a little hop, skip, and a jump past his defender, but that didn't work out very well. And Collinsville will keep the ball on a quick throw in by Trey Peterson. He gets it off of the body of Landon Mahat. Mahat will send it back to the defense and TJ Carter. Carter has that ball knocked off, and it's going to stay with Collinsville once again. And once again, Trey Peterson will throw it in right in front of Mr. Alex Paz. He is out here doing his thing with the photography. One of oh. the best in the area. Alex Paz is a Collinsville treasure. I know he's not a Collinsville Cayhawk, but he, he does some amazing things for Collinsville High School and their athletes. He's adopted himself very well to be a Collinsville Cayhawk. I agree. <laughs> Ball high into the air over on the far side. Lights, of course, are on as we got a late start due to the extremely hot temperatures, the nighttime even. I remember watching the news all this week, and at 10 o'clock at night, it's like 87 degrees, feels like 102. Yeah. No, it's it's been brutal. I'm thankful as heck that they're able to get this game in. I'd yeah. like to see Collinsville get a win as they go into Chatham on Saturday. Yeah, that would be nice. Of course, the uh, weather is supposed to break for us here over the weekend. Friday is going to be another hot day. That's why they moved the football game from a Friday night start to a Saturday morning start. Saturday's high is only supposed to be 90. I say only supposed to be 90, but... The uh, big news is is the humidity and the dew points are going to go down. That's going to make it feel a lot better. Absolutely. And then by Sunday, it's supposed to be like 83. That's going to feel like air conditioning. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I welcome that for sure. Yes. <clears throat> so we got Sam Garofalo who's sitting out tonight, as yeah. you remember, from, from the uh, red card he received against Edwardsville in the regional. That's going to be a loss for us tonight. Sam has had a heck of a summer. I know Coach Lugie and Coach Boyd have been pleased with his efforts all summer long, and hopefully we get him back soon. Yeah, I ran into Coach Lugie, or he came into the Hollywood High School the other day to talk to one of our students, and I was asking him about what's going on with this year's team, and he mm -hmm. was like, well, I hope we play this game on Wednesday night because if we don't, that means that Garofalo is going to have to sit out one more game. So he's yep. uh, happy about that. He should get Garofalo back maybe on Saturday, I think, and we'll uh, go forward from there. We got some really good additions, though. We got Joey Morales back on left back. He comes back from the St. Louis City Academy, uh, where he played for the last two years. So that's going to be a huge addition on our defensive line. Here is Gibson Hunt. He gets tripped up by Trey Peterson. No call. It was just an accident. And the ball comes all the way back. And Jacob Delaney 
Tries to send it on up, but Collins will pick that oh. off and just a little bit too hard on the feed right idea. from Landon Mahat trying to spring Adam Reiniger breaking up the middle. Yeah, it was a great idea, but just a little bit too much miles per hour on that kick. Ball sent into the night sky. Takes a big old bounce over on the far side. That's uh, Collinsville's Joey Morales. And Morales couldn't contain the ball. It ends up coming back out to midfield. And there is Juan Carlos Doria with it, but he uh, kind of flubbed on the kick. And it goes the other direction. Here's Triad trying to create a little bit of offense. And coming up here on the wing is Corey Warren. Warren gets intercepted there by T.J. Carter, but stays with it. Sends it all the way back out to the midfielders. There's Gibson Hunt Great once again. Tackle. He gets taken up by Landon Great Mahat. Tackle. And now they're trying to spring. Doria. Let's go. go. Doria. He gets a little separation. He's got some help on the way. There's Reiniger. It's Reiniger on. has to turn around. He takes the shot, and it goes oh. just wide of the far side post. So neither team has had a shot on goal yet. That was the closest we've come, and we are five minutes in to this first half. And which, by the way, we'll let you know that uh, every 20 minutes they're going to make these kids stop and drink some water and take a break. So mm -hmm. we'll have a couple of few breaks coming up in each half. Collinsville is going to have to find a way to control Gibson Hunt in the middle of the uh, triad, triad midfield. He controls the ball really well, and he's not afraid to shoot from outside. That's a player we're going to have to watch. Ball stops there on the near sideline. Peterson, he's the first one to collect it. He gets almost triple teamed and had that ball kicked out of bounds by one of the triad knights. So Peterson once again will throw it in, and he does so to Mahat. Peterson trying to keep it in bounds. He can't. That's cool. Uh, well, okay, we'll take it. Loose ball, middle of the field. Trying to slide on in there was Starco. And then it's sent back into Collinsville's offensive zone, but Doria couldn't do That's anything us. with it. And then Trey Peterson alertly banks it right off of the leg of Delaney. So Collinsville gets another throw in, comes right back to Peterson. That ball always seems to find him, doesn't it? It sure does. Peterson will let that ball go out of bounds again and another throw in coming up. So when we get to the uh, point of 20 minutes left, that's when the first break will happen, as long as there's not anyone trying to uh, score at that point. They're not, they're, they're not going to blow the whistle right at 20 minutes, let's put it that way. Yeah, they're, they're, they'll find a stoppage point. Yeah. Peterson, ball overhead once again, throws the ball in, and mm -hmm. I think that Reiniger stepped on that ball, and I think that's how he hurt himself last year. You better watch out. Here is the defensive stalwart, Dane Compton. Compton all the way back over onto the far side, puts it onto the leg of Morales. Morales sends the ball all the way up to Doria. Doria circles, splits a double team, but he got taken off the ball anyway, and the defense for Triad will send it right back to midfield. Here is Gibson Hunt. Hunt with it at the Cahawk logo. Sends it all the way over to the far side and then pushed up into the offensive zone, but there's Compton. Compton uses his head, gets the ball up to Borm. Borm, he'll send it over here to Trey Peterson. Peterson works up this near side sideline, gets it over to Doria. There Doria with a little side oh. kick. Oh, they called it offside as Reiniger maybe had one step on the defender. That was about it. I believe that was Mahat, but he was able to, you know, penetrate that defense. I think he was just offside by a step or two. Yeah. No virtual reality replays here. Mm -mm. A little disappointing, uh, Team USA in the Women's World Cup. They didn't look the same. No. No, it was a, it was a down year for sure. Yeah. Hopefully they'll get figured out and be back on top in four years. Well, next year we have the, the Men's World Cup, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on, Juan. There is Doria. Doria sends it over here to Peterson. Peterson pops it up, and it's going to be a little bit too far, and with a one-hop jumper, Delamano takes care of that one. 32 minutes and some change left here in this first half. Glad that you're with us on a hot, steamy night. We do have a nice crowd, though. Very nice crowd, considering very, how hot very, it is. Very strong crowd yeah. for Triad. Yeah, both of them. Triad all here in their red and white. Sporting a bunch of new T-shirts. All the way over to the far side it goes. Collinsville and Triad right now involved in a 0-0 contest. Last year, these two teams met in game number one of the year at Triad. Collinsville won that one 3-2. Adam Reiniger had a first-half hat trick, scored all three goals in the first half. Triad scored both of their goals in the second half. Mm. Got to get rid of that ball, Mahat. Let's go. There is Hunt. Hunt streaks up the sideline, puts a little separation between him and Carter. Now Hunt stays with it. And a crossing pass in front and a header. It's in. And the Triad Knights take the lead. And I believe that was Wyatt Sutter who 
As I mentioned, scored 16 goals last year. He's the leading goal scorer that returned. He is a dominant player, but the play starts with Gibson Hunt coming down the line, able to beat TJ Carter on this right wing, keep the ball in bounds, and slot a beautiful ball crossing, crossing pass to uh, Wyatt Suter. Great so. finish. Those are dynamic players. Yeah. So one nothing in favor of Triad. As Collinsville got caught pushing their defense up a little bit, and, and tell you what, Gibson Hunt made them pay. Yep. Yep. I told you we're gonna have to gonna have to watch those guys. Try a goal scored by number eight, Wyatt Suter. Time of the so goal. Suter picking up where he left off last year. Suter. 16 goals is what he scored. Had five assists for 37 points. He had seven game-winning goals last year. That's a lot. Yeah. His brother was extremely dynamic for that triad offense last year. So Collinsville will have to look to rebound and get that goal back. Plenty of time left, that's for sure. We're just almost 10 minutes into this first half. And the Cahawks go back to work. Here is Chris Munoz. Munoz sends the ball up to the offense, but the defense takes care of it and sends it right back, but they sent it right off the face of one of their own players, and Collinsville found the ball, and they'll take it over, and here is Trey Peterson. Peterson over Adam here Reiniger on the near side sidelines. Yeah. yeah, a call away from the play. Reiniger was taken out as he was trying to make his break up, so Collinsville will have the first free kick of this game, and it's going to come from about 35 yards out. We've seen this many times, Landon Mahat lining up to take these free kicks. I think we've been watching this for four years now, him and Chris Munoz. Yep. They'll just do a little pass, and then they'll take a shot, and it goes right past the near side post. Well, had a good game plan, right idea, mm -hmm. just failed on the execution side of it. Ten minutes gone. Thirty minutes left here in this first half. One nothing in favor of Triad. Looking for a, a little revenge against yep. Collinsville. They only lost four games last year, and one of those was the very first game of the year. Reiniger tried the old uh, sideways bicycle kick, but it ended up going the wrong way, and Reiniger all the way out there to get his own rebound or his own missed ball. And in the box, that was uh, taken I down. I think but they're going to call that outside. Yeah, barely. Right, by a step. Yeah. So it'll be... A free kick from just outside the box. Weird angle, yep. almost like a corner kick, but a little bit uh, more out to the field, right at the one yard line of the football field. Bryson Bodie, Jimmy Crowder in the house, watching uh, their teammates from last year. Yeah. There is Reiniger with the free kick. He'll send one up front, and oh. that goes right past the near side post again. Somebody has got to be there to tap that ball in. I'm not sure what they're looking at, but that's a gimme. Yeah, and it looked like it didn't hit anybody. No. I mean, it didn't, no. didn't ricochet off of an enemy either, so no. it just stayed straight and stayed straight out. In golf, that's a gimme. Yeah. I golfed about 12 times over the summer. Uh, I've been in a league all summer myself. It's been a blast. Got a uh, tournament I'm playing with my dad on September the 10th out at Elmwood. High into the air, out to midfield it goes. Takes a bounce into the triad offensive zone. Collinsville trying to collect it. Compton couldn't. And here come the triad Knights once again. That is Warren. Warren sends the ball up into the box. Over onto the far side, and that ball is ricocheted off of a body that belongs to triad right into the hands of Braden Henson. So Henson with a free kick, or excuse me, a goalie kick to get us restarted. Low line drive, takes a nice Collinsville bounce though and travels into the Collinsville offensive zone. All the way over to the triad bench where it goes out of bounds and the Knights will have the ball. Lady Kayok volleyball team in Jerseyville tonight. I'm sure they are already finished. We'll get a report on them soon enough. We'll be uh, at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium tomorrow in the air conditioning to bring you the Lady Chaos home opener against Highland. We were supposed to have games Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but because the football game got pushed to Saturday morning, we'll have Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday morning. 
Collinsville trailing by a goal, trying to send it up. That ball ricochets. Trey Peterson trying to get there, and he just about got his feet taken out from underneath him. Almost. And a substitution. First one of the game for either team, and Mikey Suarez will go out, and Doria will come back in. I didn't even know they did another yeah, earlier did. substitution. Mm -hmm. I didn't even see it. Yeah, that was probably about five minutes ago. That's a good throw by Peterson. Flick. Peterson gets it into Doria. Doria fends off one defender, and now he can't because Gibson Hunt doesn't give up on the no, ball. And you are not going to outwork Gibson Hunt. No way, no how. Peterson pushes him from behind mm -hmm. and draws the whistle, so a free kick coming up here for Triad, but it's going to be about 60, 70 yards away. Taken here by Brendan Smith. Smith delivers a high one all the way to the front of the box. It's headed out by Collinsville. Comes down in front of Peterson, but he couldn't stop it. And Peterson with a nice job there trying to keep that ball in bounds. Almost worked. Yep. Collinsville's going to have to find a way to mount some pressure on this triad defense and get some shots on frame. We have a fresh, is it freshman goalkeeper? Uh, junior. Oh, no, sophomore, sorry. Okay, sophomore. It's my understanding. Triads is a junior, ours is a sophomore. It's my understanding that uh, the starting goalkeeper broke a hand over the, uh, over the weekend or last week. So, you know, maybe that's something that can help us. So Henson, once again, will take a goal kick restart here as that ball went over the end line. And he'll put a foot into it and send it right back out to the midfield circle. Down it goes. Collinsville trying to take it over there, trying to get that ball with Starko. Great job. Got to get it off your foot, Joey. Braden Kelly, a sophomore midfielder, checks into the game for Triad. Here is Jacob Delaney. Delaney will send the ball all the way down, and Collinsville trying to track it down over on the far side, and it's sent out of bounds by Collinsville, so another throw-in coming up here for Triad. I feel like the Collinsville fans are a little stunned by that that first goal. You know, remember last year we went up 3-0 in the first yeah. half at, at Triad. Took Triad's crowd out of it. Mm-hmm. Reiniger with the natural hat trick. We got a flip throw. And that one goes in wide. Yeah, it's the uh, first game of the year. There's always going to be some mess-ups on the roster, that's for sure. It's number 17 in for Triad. We don't have a 17 on our roster. Sorry. So if he does anything special, he'll just be known as number 17. Come on, Adam. We need one, buddy. Here is Reiniger. Reiniger with a head of steam. Comes up the right side, trying to flick a pass over to Peterson, who was coming up the middle, but couldn't connect on it. Back to Mahat it goes, and it ricochets off a couple of bodies. There's more white shirts out there than purple for sure. And Collinsville heads it up. Doria trying to track it down, but Lance Stauffer, he gets there first, and the ball sent out of bounds right in between the benches. 23 and a half minutes to go here in this Ooh, I don't, first half. I don't understand that one. I don't either. That ball pretty much went straight out of bounds, yeah. didn't it? Well, up it goes, and over the Collinsville bench it goes, and once again, Triad's going to keep possession. Volleyball one in three, Zach Roseman says. So after the uh, loss Monday night at Chatham, Collinsville gets on the winning track at Jerseyville as they... Await uh, Highland tomorrow night at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. Here is Borm. Borm thought about kicking it, but then was mm. ran into there by Hunt. And Triad gets it up field once again. And over here onto the wing for Warren. Warren takes a shot, and that one's off one of the Cayhawks. And luckily for Collinsville, it comes out instead of staying in the box. Over the head of Reiniger. And then the defense chips in for the Triad Knights. They'll send it over to the far side. And trying to wrestle that ball away over there was Starko and... That ball eventually goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in coming up here for Collinsville. And we're getting close to that time of a mandatory water, water break. Yeah. Called the substitution number seven, Giovanni Mann. Mann checks in for Triad. There is Collinsville. Trying to whip that ball up. Here is Mahat. Mahat will send it over, but he behind him. sends it right through the legs of Borm, and that allows Triad to come up with it. More specifically is Corey Warren, 
And then Collinsville will intercept, send it back. Peterson couldn't get there in time. Comes over here on the near side to Gentiman, and now a whistle. We just look out of sorts here. We're not, we're not connecting our passes. Our shape is not good right now. Got a lot of different players in different positions, but they've had all summer to work on it. Free kick from about 35 yards out here, taken by Brendan Smith, a sophomore midfielder. He'll pop the ball up. I think, did I hear a whistle right when he kicked that? I thought I did. Yeah, well, I guess not. All right, we got one guy up and the whole team back. Well, here is the one guy you want. Here is Reiniger, cuts it around, takes a shot, yes! and it's good! And yes! Reiniger puts Collinsville on the board to tie it at one. That is a player. 21-09. Well, you said we only got one guy back. It just happened to be the right guy. Man, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, you had Adam at the 40-yard line, and you had everybody else back. But he is Triad's nemesis. Yeah, that he is. Leading goal scorer from a year ago for Collinsville. Gets on the board first. And I'm sure it will not be his last. No. Here is Triad. They got a little pressure going on as well. They send it up front, and that's kicked out of bounds by Borm. Goes across the end line. And we are going to have our first corner kick. <coughs> We're going to have to figure out this right back position here. Something's, something's out of sorts right now. Well, each team has had one shot on goal, and each team has scored. Right. Other than that, goalkeepers have not had to make any saves. Here's the corner kick. Goes out from one side to the other side. Collinsville is the only one to touch it. Ball. And a loose ball out there just outside the box and sent into the middle. But there is Mahat using his noggin to get that ball out of there. Now Doria, he'll try to survey things. Sends it up here to Peterson. Oh. Peterson, he's a fast guy. He's got that cut speed too. He'll cut it, send it up. Doria oh. almost he was headed for Reiniger, and then Doria stepped right over it. I think that threw yeah, everybody off. I think it did. Up in the air we go. We are past the 20 minute mark. And that ball goes out of bounds and now we'll probably have a break. You would think. It is that 20 minute mark, there it is. Yep. We are going to take a water break at the 20 minute mark and we'll be back right after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Plumbing or electrical problems? Is your AC or heater on the fridge? There are dozens of companies out there, but do you really know who you're letting in your tiger? Our technicians are clean cut, drug free, and background checked. What other company can make this bold statement? Our 24 hour emergency service will ensure your plumbing, heating, AC, and electric are up and running no matter what time of day it is. Schedule your appointment today. Tiger Plumbing, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electrical Services. We earn our stripes every day. PacMail of Collinsville, locally owned and operated by Ryan Combs. PacMail can ship anything, anywhere. They treat you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. PacMail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate-controlled self-storage. Visit PacMail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online at weshipstlouis.com or call PacMail at 346-4884. The Collinsville Education Association is a proud supporter of KHOKSports.com and the KHOK Sports Network. The CEA is your partner as they work to ensure quality education for our children. The CEA advocates excellence and equity in public education and represent over 400 educators in 11 schools in both Madison and St. Clair counties. For more information, you can visit the Collinsville Education Association's Facebook page or the CEA's website at CollinsvilleCEA.org. Collinsville High School alumni Stacy Lowenstein, CHS Class of 91, Lisa Bassetto, Sarah Sulky, and Tracy Lemp, CHS Class of 94, Tony Geisen, CHS Class of 96, and Kevin Robinson, CHS Class of 99, want to wish all of our Cahawks a great year. We look forward to cheering you on and supporting you. Work hard on the court and the field, as well as in the classroom. Remember, once a Kayhawk, always a Kayhawk. Hashtag Kayhawk family. 
Your home is where you feel happy, safe, and secure. So if you see signs of foundation problems like cracks or uneven floors, worrying is natural and getting it fixed is crucial. Woods Basement Systems understands. We've been solving foundation worries since 1986. Experts have the training and equipment to make permanent repairs. So stop worrying because with Woods, it's fixed forever. Foundation problems don't get better with time. They get better with Woods, the all things base experts. Call or go to woodsbasementsystems.com today. Water break is over. Todd Duke, Brett Borm back with you. 19 and a half minutes to go here in this tied first half just thus far. And that ball ends up going out of bounds. No. And they're going to say it went out of bounds on Collinsville. No. So. All right. So you do have a lineup change. Braden Borm's back at right back. And Enrique, Enrique Carranza, Carranza has into taken the game. his spot with Chris Munoz. He's a big dude, man, Carranza. Yeah. All right. Back to action. Here's Borm. He'll throw it in to Compton. Compton. Oh. That's a rare mistake by Compton, but he gets back and makes sure that that ball didn't get any farther. So that was nice recovery by Dane. That was almost a giveaway there. Sure was. Mm. Here is Reiniger again. Reiniger gets taken down right in front of the triad bench just when he was getting he some was, separation. He was on a break, about to have separation. And was there a card issued there? I don't think so. No? OK. I was trying to tell by, no. OK. All right, free kick coming from the far side, about 35 yards out. Hawks trying to do something with a set piece here. Ball on the way, popped That's up pretty. right in front. That's nice. Pretty. And off of the head of one of the triad players, comes all the way out front. Reiniger steps in front of it. And over here on the near sideline, of course, he gets double teamed anywhere he goes. And he gets out of it somehow or another, gets spun down. And briefly, it was onto the foot of Morales, but Morales couldn't keep it. Triad, they come up. There's a little nice step, and stepping in the way there was Munoz, but staying with it is Wyatt Sutter. Sutter has the goal for Triad, and he was a workhorse on the way down with that one. Wyatt Sutter is? Sutter. Sutter, yes. Sutter, it's Sutter. Sutter. Yeah, I know. No. I'm a Blues fan from way back, man. Right. It's been, all been Sutters. <laughs> Wyatt, Wyatt's a legitimate player. Looks like we got two more subs up on the, on the line. Coach Lugie probably recognizing. Guys are a little gassed. Yeah, the heat and the fitness still isn't probably where it needs to be at this point in the season. And I hope he's going to be looking for fresh legs. Stauffer checks back into the game for Triad. There's one off the back and a save by Henson. That went off of the back of one of the Chaos players and went right down and found a Triad player's foot, and that one almost went in. So Henson will send this back to work. He'll do so with a pass over here to Borm. Borm, he'll send a rocket shot up. trying to get it to midfield. Didn't make it that far. And then a loose ball picked up by Triad. They're on the move once again. And once again, here is Gibson Hunt right from where he helped last time. That one was headed out by Collinsville's Dane Compton. And now moved up by the Hawks. Here is Peterson. Peterson. Great juke. Yeah, did a nice little job there getting rid of his defender. Gets the ball all the way up now. For Mahat. Oh, Mahat sends it up for Reiniger. Reiniger trying to oh. out hustle Brendan Smith, and Smith turned on the gas there at the mm -hmm. end and kept up with him. Mikey Suarez and Ty Starko into the game for Collinsville as well as TJ Carter. So three in, three out for the Cahawks as we approach. 15.45 left to play here in this first half. We're tied 1-1. Triad getting the first goal of the game about nine minutes in, 10 minutes later. Reiniger ties it up. Loose ball out to midfield it goes. Sent up. Borm trying to get the ball away from Gentiman. He does so, and now Collinsville will have a throw in. There's a little bit of a breeze, and every once in a while a it bit. kicks through this press box, and it feels wonderful, but it just it's one of those two-second things. Here is Mahat. 
Mahat trying to thread the needle up to Reiniger. Reiniger back over to Mahat. Mahat, he gets triple teamed, trying to get out of it. He does so with a little back heel kick over to Reiniger. Reiniger just outside the box here on this near side. He's being double teamed, and that ball pushed out of bounds by Brendan Smith for Triad. So a throw in coming up here, and Adam will take the throw in this time. <clears throat> We'll throw the ball in and get it right back. Ah. Takes a shot on goal, and it's a one bouncer right to Delamano. Each team with a goal, each team with two shots on goal now. Only one corner kick so far, and that belonged to Triad. All the way over on the far side. Ball comes in in between the benches, popped up into the air. And comes down, spinning around there was Mahat. He couldn't find the ball as that ball takes a bounce right into the Hayhawk bench. Collinsville trying to go back to work. Send it up here to Trey Peterson. Great Peterson ball. tries to dipsy doodle around and a whistle. I'm not sure what he called there. I think it was away from the play, so I wasn't really sure myself. I think it was against Borm, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I don't know. I don't know either. So a free kick coming up here for the Knights from about 70 yards away. 75, we'll call it. Brendan Smith, senior defender. He'll put a leg into it and send it all the way down into the front of the box. Comes out, and here's Peterson. Trey trying to get that ball past Delaney, but Delaney poked it right out of bounds. Peterson. Starco needs to come over. Trying yes. to come in. Thank you, Trey. Peterson keeps on running up. Figured eventually the referee would be like, hey, that's far enough. <laughs> Off of the head of Reiniger and into the Collinsville offensive zone, but no one back there wearing the purple and white to get it. So Brendan Smith will take over here for Triad. He'll send the ball all the way into the other zone. Mm. Misjudged that one, Joey. Yeah. Over on the far side, back inside side. the box. And Triad trying to put on a little pressure, a little back kick there right in the middle, and a save once again by Henson, and if I'm not mistaken, that was yes, Ty. Ty, yeah. Tried that little back heel kick, almost worked. Henson just happened to be in the right spot. He's offsides. There's a ball, and he was yeah, offsides. Triad fans know it too. Yeah. They're they're calling for it, but it's not called. And now a push from behind by Jacob Delaney on Ty Starko will give Collinsville a free kick here. Joe Hayden missed a, a, an offsides by a mile. But we'll take it. Yeah. And if Collinsville scores off of this free kick, you're going to hear some complaining. Yep. Yep. Here is Munoz. Munoz ball, sends it out it over? and over the far side and off of a head and out of bounds. So a goal kick restart coming up here for Triad as we have about 11.45 left to play. Here in this first half. So far, I would say it's a you know pretty evenly matched game. Both yeah. teams, both teams have had their opportunities. Triad capitalizing first. Collins will get an equalizer. Travis check checks back into the game for Triad. That's a mouthful. Common and spelling. the Knights uh -oh. go back to work. It's back door here. Far side crossing pass misses everybody. Coming out for it, though. Good, TJ. The Knights, Travacek, sends it all the way back, and Gibson Hunt takes over at midfield. Hunt will send it over to the far side defender, and Reiniger trying to get the ball away from him. He causes enough disturbance that Collinsville has a chance to intercept, but they gave it right back to the Knights. Knights trying once again with a little offensive push here. They'll take a shot on goal and a save once again by Henson. Triad starting to get some shots on goal now. Gibson Hunt is as nifty as they come. You got to get a body on him. Braden Henson sends the ball back out to midfield. Nobody there. By the way, I told the coaches when I was down there getting my lineups and getting my pregame interview, there will not be a post game <laughs> because it is hot and it is late, and most everybody down there has to go to work tomorrow just like us. I so hear you, sir. I apologize to Dr. Chris McCluskey. We'll make it up for him a little bit later on. I don't think. Anybody will fault you for that. I don't think so either. 
I'm going to have to go home and take a shower. <laughs> I'm going to go home and jump in the pool. <laughs> I wish I had a pool to jump into. <laughs> Coming up on 10 minutes to go here in this first half. Ball comes in. Hmm. In the box it goes. Out of the box it goes. Gibson Hunt made sure of that. Bring it down. It all the way back touch. now for Carranza. And then it makes it all the way back to the defense and giving it chases Morales. And Morales sends it all the way back to Hinson. Hinson sends it back down to the Collinsville's offensive zone. And then it takes a hit off of one of the heads of the Knights and goes all the way back to their goalkeeper. That would be Cortland Delamano. Clay Smith will join us at halftime. He has been a very busy guy. Yeah, I feel bad for that guy. I know. He's had to do all, all week. It's brutal. Yeah. Look at the gap here between Adam Reiniger and, and the next level. Yeah. He's got nobody supporting him. And I get it. It's hot. He gets Fitness it into Starco. Tough. Yeah. Gets it into Starco, but Triad gets the ball, and Compton, off of his head, will send it to Henson. Well played, Dane. That's well played. Yeah. And we'll roll the ball out like a bowling ball, and Collinsville will go back to work offensively. That's us. Send it over to the sideline, and that's out of bounds into the Cahawk bench. Throw in coming up yeah. here for uh, the Knights. Yeah, yeah, he's calling this way. Whoa. <laughs> that was correct. Throw in for the Cahawks comes in front of their own bench. About eight and a half minutes to go here in this first half. Shift, shift. Over to Compton. Compton sends it across the way to Carter. Carter sends the ball up to Borm. Borm nice races it up the middle. That was a nice ball, but Starko <coughs> couldn't find the handle after initially getting the first touch. Here is Trey Peterson. He fights off mm. his defender, but he gets called for it. Triad sends the ball up, and Carter sends it back. Knights pick it up, though. Trying to make Good another buddy. offensive push. Peterson stopped that from happening. Mahat, he'll send the ball up to Doria, but Doria couldn't control it. Finds it again, though. Sends it over to Peterson, off of a head, and back out to midfield. Oh. Doria seems to be, like, holding his left side as he runs uh, up the field. Is there something wrong sure. with him? I don't know. I'm not sure. Little spinorama there and taken out of the play by Gintiman was Starko. You know, the two things that are said the most around this area in the summertime, it's yeah, if it wasn't for the humidity. In the wintertime, it's yeah, if it wasn't for the wind. Come on, TJ, it's battle. <laughs> TJ is doing some battle in there. He turns around, gets rid of Hunt, and then it finds a couple of Triad Knight players, but that ball stepped in front of by Peterson. Back to Borm, over to Carter. Collinsville trying to settle the ball down so they can make some proper passes here. Right now it's just ricocheting off mm -hmm. the shin after shin. Well, it's first touch. It yeah. comes back to technique and first touch, and when your first touch bounces three feet away from you, that's a problem. Reiniger was trying to send Starko in on a breakaway, but the defender was just in the right spot at the right time. Chris Munoz checks into the game. He'll take the place of Carranza. And Warren checks back into the game for Triad. Ball out of bounds. It'll belong to the Knights. Every once in a while, a breeze comes through the door here. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just enough to make you think, it's not so bad. No, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Got a uh, half moon up in the sky, a little bit hazy it is. Just glad they got it in. They got to get that first match underneath them. There is a ball that pops up in the air in a dangerous spot. Carter tries to get it out there. He does, but not as far as he would have liked to. And then it's that sent back in. Offsides. And yep, that one's offside. Called by the referee over on the far side, the line judge. And Collinsville will have a 
goal kick restart here with 5.15 left to play in this first half. One to one. Non-conference team, so there will be no overtime. There will be no PKs if it stays that way. Mm -hmm. And Hinson sends it out. All the way past Collinsville's top line there and giving it chase over there is Daria, but he ended up sending it out of bounds, thrown back in up the far sideline right at midfield. Oh, come on, boys. You got to stay with your runners. Triad on the move offensively once again. They'll send the ball up onto the foot of Travis Yuck. Back out it goes. They're just sticking out legs right now, and that's not working. Delaney sends the ball up into the box. Takes a bounce. Carter, he gets there first. Sends it back. Mahat trying to corral the ball and send it over to Peterson, but he never did. Now a slow roller will find Henson and will be okay. Four fifteen to play. Woods halftime show is coming up, but we don't have a lot to speak of because everything's kind of been canceled. I know it's a Wednesday night, which is a, a weird night to be playing soccer. Usually you play either Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So there's really nothing going on besides the Lady Kayhawks score we can tell you about. So it'll be a very brief scoreboard portion of the halftime show. We'll uh, talk things over with Clay Smith, though. Brought to you by Woods Basement Systems, our halftime show is once again this year. Reiniger off of his head, sends it up. Triad, of course, back there first. A little uh, push from behind there by old uh, Lance Stauffer. We need us some Sammy Garofalo tonight. We need some fresh legs. Coach Lugie trying to make substitutions, keep some of those legs fresh, and yep. <clears throat> some of these guys get winded out here in this stifling humidity. Guarantee you those shirts weigh a ton right now. Oh, I'm sure. Shirts, socks, everything. Collinsville going back to work. Come on, you're making him work too hard, Juan Carlos. Let's see if they can get a goal here before the half ends. Here is Carter up to Borm. Borm over here on the near side. Pops the ball up that near side sideline, trying to spring Trey Peterson. That gets past the defenders. For Tri oh, Peterson, he... That's going to be against Trey. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, he kind of yanked him down there. Yeah. He's got to keep his head. This is where Peterson has got to keep his head. Did he get a card? He looks like it. So, what he's got to do now, and this is a good move by Coach Lugie, is he's got to keep his head. He can't let Triad goat him into another foul. So Peterson will have to go have a seat, and Giovanni Mann will come in and take his place, maybe for the rest of the half. Giovanni Mann, a freshman, only one freshman making this varsity roster from the start. Oh, boy. Yeah. We're back to work here as we approach two and a half minutes to go in this first half. Triad sends a screamer, a low screamer, nice all the way up to midfield, finds the foot of Corey Warren. Warren sends the ball up, but that was Joy Morales who kind of got there first but couldn't stay with it. Loose ball in front and a shot that goes well wide over here on the near side post area, so it'll be a goal kick restart coming up here for Collinsville. I think he's calling a corner. Is he? He's pointing that direction. Yeah, he is. So the second corner kick of the game coming up for Triad. Collinsville has not had one, although they was pretty close over there with a foul just outside the box. Collinsville's got to be strong defending in the air. Triad is known for winning balls and scoring goals in the air, just like they scored the first time. Here's Gibson Hunt with the corner kick. It's high over like the that. far side and over the top of the net. It, he did everything but score there. Yeah. I believe that was Wyatt Suter again. He's just as dangerous in the air as his brother. And somehow they always find the head. Somehow. Practice, practice, practice. Well, you got to put a body on them, and you can't. You got to challenge in the air. You can't. You can't just let them jump over you. Ball after midfield. Triad sends it back down to their offensive oh, zone. Compton goodness. was there, but he sent it back with a little bit of a weak effort, and that one goes over the net. And that's going to be a corner kick because that was off of Henson's hands. Triad is 
really pressing here in the final minute. One minute remaining in the first half, one minute. At this point, I'd really like to see Collins will just get the ball out and clear it and let's, let's go to halftime. Yeah. And regroup. Regroup, make some adjustments, rest up a bit, get some much needed water. Once again, Gibson Hunt with the corner kick. And all the way to the other side it goes, and it comes out. But Triad's there. They'll take another crack at it over here. And here is Hunt coming over into this left side. He'll put one in the middle, saved by Hinson. And then it's finally put in 2-1 to one in favor of Triad. Nobody getting to the loose ball when it's bouncing in the box. That's a problem. Everybody's standing there looking at the ball instead of busting their butt for the last 20 seconds. Well, that one was scored by Landon Travnicek. Travnicek. Just looking at it. Try a second goal of the game, scored by number 12, Landon Travnicek. Time to goal, 39-39, Travnicek. So that's gonna do it for the first half of this one. Two to one in favor of the Triad Knights. We will take a break and we will welcome you in to the halftime show brought to you by Woods Basement Systems. All things basementy. Woods Basement Systems working to keep homes dry since 1986. Give Woods Basement Systems a call at their Collinsville headquarters at 618-708-4055. Woods Basement System halftime show comes your way next on the Kayhawk Sports Network. <laughs> Just because we're adults doesn't mean we don't have toys, am I right? If your adult toys consist of boats, campers, or RVs, then you need to call the GASA storage team of professionals. Winter weather in the Midwest can be quite harsh, and finding a place to properly store those expensive toys for winter can be just as rough as a Midwest winter. That's where the GASA storage team comes in, with outdoor self-storage and covered storage for your toys. They even have tractor-trailer parking. Conveniently located at Horseshoe Lake Road and 111 in Pontoon Beach. GASA Storage, for the safe storage of all of your toys. Contact the GASA Storage Team, GASA Storage at gmail.com, or call today, GASA Storage Team, 618-797-6100. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery in Collinsville produces their own spirits and beer on site right at the restaurant. Pair that with some of the most unique menu items around the entire metro area and you can see why they are such a hit. They can handle you and your family or they can handle you and your group. Throw in the occasional live entertainment and you can see why Old Herald Brewery and Distillery is a must stop destination in Collinsville. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery, 115 East Clay Street in Collinsville, 618-855-8027 or online at oldheraldbrewing.com. Looking to buy a new home or sell your current home? Trust the Blaylock Group of eXp Realty with all of your real estate needs. The real estate market is hot right now and you can trust the years of experience the Blaylock Group brings to the table. The Blaylock Group can help you find your dream home, or they can help you get top dollar for your current home. Give Peyton or Emily Blaylock a call today at the Blaylock Group of eXp Realty, 618-780-4622. That's 618-780-4622. The Blaylock Group of eXp Realty. Todd Duke here proud member of the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Whether you call us teachers' aides, paraprofessionals, or educational assistants, it all comes down to one thing, taking care of students. More importantly, your student. Yes, we are there for the teachers, and we help them in any way possible. But our goals are in line with our teachers in that we want to see our students succeed at not only being a student, but well beyond that as we ready them for the world outside of the classroom. We are union strong. We are Kayhawk strong. We strive to help students reach their potential. 
We are the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Go Cahawks! Once again, we welcome you back into the Woods Basement Systems Halftime Show here on the Cahawks Sports Network. 2-1 to one in favor of Triad after one half of play. Joining us now is Collinsville Athletic Director Clay Smith. How are you, sir? Hi, Todd. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. So tell me about your week, man. I heard, <laughs> a, I heard it was kind of a whirlwind. Yeah, you know, just sitting around with my feet up, not doing much. <laughs> uh, yeah, what can you do, right? We can't control the weather, so we just adapt and we do the best that we can and we follow the guidelines given to us and we move forward. So uh, I don't know about you, man, but have you ever been through a week like this? Not that I can remember, no, not, no, not at all. Uh, and, you know, the fact we our, our main priority are to keep our kids and coaches and fans safe, which I completely agree with. Uh, so I'm just, you know, I was happy that we got a little break tonight. We could get these kids on the field. Yeah, because the first week of school was beautiful. Yes, it was. The first week of school was beautiful, and next week should be beautiful. So we just have to get through a couple more days and, and grin and bear it and move some games around and, our coaches and kids have been fantastic, and our community opened up doors, you know, to get them indoors. Our tennis team went to the Eversville YMCA. Our golf team went to the field uh, in, in Granite City the other night. Uh, so we've found, we have found ways to get them to practice and to train. So uh, all in all, it's, it's, it's been good, but we, we, you know, we'd much rather have them competing every single day. But at the end of the day, we want to keep them healthy. So This week will end pretty soon, and the weather will change, and it will be all nice. So. Besides that, what's on your mind? What you got going on? <laughs> well, you know everything, right? So we're, you know, we're, we're raring to go in fall sports, and we're always a step ahead. I'm always preparing for the Prairie Farms Holiday Classic, so we have that on the mind. Uh, I can't wait for football season and getting fans in Kayok Stadium. Uh, you know, we're, we're two weeks on the road, which is a little odd compared to the schedules that we've had before, so that's going to take a little bit to get used to. But I'm just anxious to get out and watch all of our teams compete. I had a chance to watch volleyball uh, the other night when they opened up in Chatham, and they had a good win tonight at Jersey. Uh, so hopefully carry that momentum tomorrow night in our home opener. But, yeah, I want to get out and see golf, and I want to see our girls' tennis teams compete in cross country. And, you know, just it's, it's, it's great to have kids on campus and, and the coaches and the fans in the stands. I love it. There's nothing better than high school sports. Got Diamonds for Cahawks still going on? Yeah, Diamonds for Cahawks is still going strong. So, uh, you know, we're still accepting donations, and we're still talking to, to some major sponsors and trying to get that going, and we're, and we're close. So we're, we're trying to do the best we can for our softball and baseball families and those and those kids to get them on campus and, and get them a place to play. And then the uh, next priority is air conditioning in the press box. So yeah, air conditioning in the press box is, is a must. So, you know, any viewers out there that have any background in, in installing air conditionings, if you would like to make a donation to Todd Duke <laughs> and Kayok Athletics, we would gladly accept that right about now. Oh, you ain't kidding. It'd be a little bit uh, late right now, <laughs> but you know, if this ever happens again, we'll, we'll be well, there. you know, Todd, with this Midwest weather, it could be great next week and we could be right here again. You never know. So thank you for your visit, sir. Yeah, man, Todd, and we appreciate you too. Thanks for all you do for our kids. I appreciate you as well, sir. That is Clay Smith, your athletic director here at Collinsville High School, and we appreciate him coming up here to this hot booth and joining us on the Woods Basement Systems Halftime Show. Final break coming your way before second half action is next. On the Keep your ride shiny and clean with Extreme Details Vehicle Detailing in Collinsville. Owner Jay Merkel and his crew at Extreme Details believe in the value of community and in helping their community hold the value of their vehicles with a sharp looking, clean ride that you and your community can be proud of. Extreme Details can handle any job, whether you drive a small car, an SUV, or even a bus or RV. No job is too big or too small at Extreme Details. Extreme Details offers scratch and oxidation removal. No matter what you drive, cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, and more. Plus, Extreme Details can handle fleet vehicles for you and your company. Call Jay and the gang at Extreme Details at 618-977-1224. Check for periodic specials on the Extreme Details Facebook page. Put the shine in your ride with Extreme Details, 618-977-1224. No one likes a dirty house. It's work that almost no one wants to do. Why not get someone to do that work for you? Kara Gray with Rags to Riches Cleaning Service would love to take that task off your to-do list. Kara is a homegrown Collinsville High School graduate and the owner of Rags to Riches. 
from floors to ceilings, from baseboards to light fixtures. Rags to Riches can clean them all. No job is too big or too small. Call Kara Gray at Rags to Riches Cleaning Service to schedule a free estimate today at 618-979-9634 or visit Rags to Riches Cleaning Service on Facebook. Are you in need of a new mailbox to go with your new home? How about a new mailbox to replace your old one? Look no further than Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. From economy to custom, Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can create a mailbox that suits your needs. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes is licensed and insured. They use only high-quality materials and offer a satisfaction guarantee policy. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can also make your very own axe throwing set, hanging or standing. Whether you need that axe throwing set or a new mailbox, you need Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. For more information, get a hold of Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes at 618-680-0208 or online at needanewmailbox.com. The Collinsville Area Community Foundation is our community's charitable foundation. We connect people, support programs, and guide resources to help our community thrive. Our board is made up of local leaders that donate their time and expertise to identify opportunities for long-term community impact in and around Collinsville. Find out more about scholarships, grants, and ways to give back to the city we love by visiting CollinsvilleFoundation.com. All Pro Tees in Caseyville is your place for custom apparel and has been for over 20 years now. Why? All Pro Tees can handle any size project, big or small, and they specialize in large group orders. At All Pro Tees, quality is number one on their list of priorities, as is evident by their excellent service staff. Did we mention All Pro Tees has over 20 years of experience? They can even help with fundraisers and event merchandising for your group. And of course, All Pro Tees is your destination for everything Collinsville Cayhawks. So for all of your apparel needs, for civic groups, sports teams, business outings, or even a family reunion, your apparel needs stop at All Pro Tees. All Pro Tees in Caseyville at 2240 South Morrison Avenue. Online at allprotees.com. Right across the street from Cayhawk Stadium. All Pro Tees, 618-344-2200. And once again, we will welcome you back to Hawk Stadium. Second half action just about ready to get underway. My name is Todd Duke, Brett Borm on the other microphone. So, Mr. Borm, uh, give us your thoughts on the first half. You know, I, I would have to say that for the most part, it was a it was a pretty evenly evenly played first half. Each each team had its opportunities. Each team was able to score. However, I do not like Collinsville's effort in the last 90 seconds to two minutes of that half, especially inside their 18-yard box. That goal uh, should not have happened because n nobody was going to that loose ball inside that six-yard box. 20 and seconds left, man. They seconds. fell asleep. They fell asleep. And that's a great point. And that can't happen. That can't happen. I think Collins was struggling with their shape. Um, I see a little bit different formation now coming back with one sweeper and three across the back with – Morales on the left, Borm in the middle, and, and T.J. Carter on the right. Let's see if that helps. All right, halftime adjustments have been made. We are underway, and Collinsville trying to get the equalizer here, and we have a whistle right off the bat against Triad, so Collinsville will get a free kick here, but it's going to be from about midfield as we are underway in half number one. Chris Castens, you know him? Yes. Says, Brett, your volume is lower than Duke's. Can't hear you that well. Well, Chris, that is because when Adam Reiniger scored, <laughs> Mr. Borm yet out a primal scream <laughs> that just about broke the sound barrier in my ears, so I turned him down. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I appreciate the support. <laughs> Todd's right. I do tend to freak out a little bit. Uh, so I turned him down. I turned him back up. Hopefully that helps now. I'll try to try to keep my composure, Chris. Contain and yourself, man. Contain, contain yourself. Hey, I, I'm, I'm a dad too, brother. I hear you. All right, let's see if Collinsville can answer. A, they did 10 minutes after Triad scored the first goal of the game. And then, as we mentioned, Collinsville kind of fell asleep there in the waning seconds before uh, that half ended. Here is Peterson over there. He banks it off a body, so Peterson playing on the far side sideline now. Tell you what, these, uh, these headphones, which we in the business call cans, 
They make your ears sweat. Yeah. Yeah, I was soaking wet. I had to wipe him for Coach Smith. I hope he wasn't. Yeah, uh, I did. I did too. I okay. didn't know you did that, but I did, I did too. Yeah, I, w I was trying to be nice. Yeah, these are brand new headsets, by the way. So uh, they're getting a break in here real quick. Got brand new headset, brand new audio mixer board. That means it's hand-me-down time. So all my older stuff is going to the Kayhawk Broadcasting Club, and they will put that stuff to good use. We got two back posts here. On uh, Monday, they'll be here to do a JV football game. How about that? There you go. Yeah. Good for them. That's a really cool thing you did. Yeah, thank you. Had our first meeting today. Nice. Got to meet a couple of the uh, new participants in the club as well as the old ones that came back. Any rising stars? Uh, well, one of them couldn't show up. She had tennis practice. That would be Layla Hutch. She, uh, she's a rock star. Um, Jack Easley, who took over last year as the PA announcer at the uh, Kayhawk Baseball Stadium for the baseball team. I like him. He's got good enthusiasm. Zach Roseman's younger brother, Josh, he's in the club. He's uh, here enjoying the game somewhere in the stands. And, of course, Mr. Zach Roseman himself is still hanging with us. Here's another opportunity for Triad. A nice little stop there by Dane Compton. He put his body on the line for that one, and Triad mm -hmm. has had a couple of good chances here early on in this second half. Fallonsville still trying to figure things out. Gosh. Up the middle it goes, and Peterson couldn't contain it, and now it's popped up, uh. and that's offside. Reiniger was just a step ahead of the defender. Yep, yep. Speaking of broadcasting, how about Matt Clark? Did Matt I Clark, see yep. him getting a uh, some sort of his first job, play-by-play? Yep. -play? He is doing play-by-play -play for a school out in middle Missouri. He's nice. been uh, asking me a bunch of questions about equipment, mixer board and headsets and all that stuff. I'm very happy for Matt. He's going to do fine in this profession. Absolutely. He'll De join us again for the Prairie Farms Tournament. Yeah. Dedicated, wants to, wants to do good. Bundle of energy. Yeah, oh, you know that. Very organized. Well, he probably learned that from you. Yeah, well, that kid had more like, he had more stuff in his binder than I've had. <laughs> Get to the ball, Joey. He was uh, he was very, very prepared for the Fra Prairie Farms Tournament, that's for sure. Nothing wrong with that, man. Always better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. Right. That's uh, in anything in life, really. Consul's got to make sure they got their marks here. That ball finds Henson, and they'll take care of that one no problem at all. But right now it's been all triad here in the first four minutes of the second half. Henson mishit that one. And, and the back heel's not going to work in that situation either, Landon. Come on, buddy. No. Nope. So the Kayhawks are trailing 2-1, to one and a whistle will stop the action. Kayhawk volleyball team won. Dropped the first set, 25-21, so they had to come back and ended up winning it in three, 25-21 the middle score, and then 25-23 the late score of that match to pull out the two to one victory. So congratulations to Coach Katie Cease and Brenna Swartz and all the girls associated with the Lady Kayhawk volleyball program. We'll have some volleyball for you tomorrow against Highland in the home opener. Triad once again, keeping possession in the offensive zone and now we have a timeout and we have a st clock stoppage as Collinsville has an injured player Chris Munoz is on down. the field. So Munoz is down. That'll give us an opportunity to take a break here for just a moment. We'll be back after a timeout here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. First National Bank of Waterloo, with over 100 years serving the Metro East. Visit First National Bank of Waterloo at their Maryville or Collinsville locations for all of your banking, mortgage, and lending needs. Why? Super low closing costs, low construction loan rates, and they do so much to support our local communities. When you need a loan, call the Collinsville team at First National Bank of Waterloo at 618-345-1121 or visit their Maryville or Collinsville locations or online at fnbwaterloo.bank. First National Bank of Waterloo, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Mike's Automotive in Collinsville is a T3 certified tire dealer and so much more. Sure, Mike's Automotive has tires. They can also help with making sure your entire vehicle is road ready. From belts and hoses to preventative maintenance like oil changes and tire rotation. Plus a lot more than that. Mike's Automotive has three locations to choose from. Mike's Automotive in St. Louis and Milstadt and Mike's Automotive in Collinsville at 1150 St. Louis Road, just blocks from the high school. Or call Mike's Automotive at 618-345-0611. Mike's Automotive in Collinsville. 
Chris Munoz walked off under his own power, so that was nice to see as we are back here to continue this second half. A couple things to point out here, notation. Uh, Coach Lugie is swapping Peterson and Reiniger side to side, and as they do so, Coach Jackson is swapping Gibson Hunt, and he is totally going to man mark Adam Reiniger for the rest of this match. So Adam will have to find a way, either that or somebody else needs to step up. You're right. Number two is probably what needs to happen. Yep. Ball at midfield. That was banked off of the backside there of Doria. And then Take sent that. out of bounds. Yep. Let's go. There is Peterson who switches sides of the field. He was over on the far. Now he's over here on the near. Looking for uh, Avenue to throw this ball. And there's nothing. He's looking, but there's nothing there. And we'll find Reiniger. Reiniger tried to send it back out over here to the near side, but he missed the mark on that one. Then it finds the foot of Gentleman for a triad, and he'll send the ball out of bounds. Chris Munoz checking back in for Giovanni Mann. Well, that's good. He didn't last very long. No. So Munoz gets the ball back as soon as he checks back into the game. Decision making is too slow here. Now to midfield, it goes to Borm. Borm will send it back over to Compton. Compton, he'll send it back out to midfield to Mahat. Mahat, he's got Trey Peterson coming up over here on the left side, cuts it across the middle, takes a shot, and that's blocked out before it even made it in the box. And the loose ball all the way to the far side. Doria trying to track it down. He does so. He'll send it back onto the foot of Munoz. Munoz, he'll take a shot. That one goes wide. Chris did not get all of that, and if I think if he had his choice, he'd get it back and, and get more on that ball. Seven minutes gone here in the second half. Just a reminder, we'll take another uh, water break. They'll blow the whistle right around the 20-minute mark so these kids can get themselves some refreshment, take a little bit of a break. Come on. It's a gift. And here comes Collinsville up the middle. Here is Peterson. Can't get there. It was poked out at the last second by Delamano. As Collinsville had a real good chance there. But that ball never made it on goal. That's a good piece of goalkeeping there. Yeah, it was. Sometimes you got to come out, man. Mm. You got to leave your comfort zone. You do. Cut down the angle. He got low. Yeah. Yep, he did everything right. So now, Triad trying to create a little bit more of an offensive push as that ball goes right into the Knights bench. Throwback comes in quickly, all the way over on the far side, just outside of the box, and no whistle on the play. Corner kick. As that ball goes over the line, and Triad will have their fourth corner kick of this game. Collinsville is yet to have one. Let's see if Collinsville can defend this corner kick properly. Challenge balls in the air. I'd like to see. Braden Henson own his six yard box. Yeah, because this game could very well be three to one. That last corner kick. High, out front, and doesn't hit a soul. Being chased down over here by Borm, and now we have another injured Kayhawk. This one inside the box. Who is it? Who is it? And that's going to stop the clock with about 31 and a half minutes to go. Looks like Peterson. Uh, it's a cramp. Nope, Peterson's right there. No, nope, that's going to be Reiniger. Reiniger? Oh, no. And that's a, that's a cramp, the way I see him reacting. All right, we have another injury timeout. We'll step aside for just a moment here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Got vinyl? Rich's Record Emporium in Uptown Collinsville can take care of all of your vinyl needs and more. You can peruse through thousands of records, from country to hard-to-find jazz, and classic rock is always in stock at Rich's Record Emporium, used vinyl, new vinyl, and hard-to-find vinyl. Don't forget to check out the audio room at Rich's where you can check out the latest in audio gear from new top-of-the-line speakers to turntables and receivers plus all of the accessories. Rich's has t-shirts, record cleaners, turntable needles, wall art, and so much more. If you can't find what you're looking for at Rich's, they will do their best to find it for you. Don't forget to mention seeing this ad on the Kayhawk Sports Network for a 10% discount at checkout. Rich's Record Emporium, 131 West Main Street in Collinsville, or call 618-795-1333 or online at richesrecordemporium.com. Herald Square and Cold Herald, two great additions to the Collinsville landscape. Next to the Old Herald Brewery and Distillery, Herald Square is a new outdoor multi-use event space in Collinsville. Concerts, fun and games, farmer markets, and so much more. Herald Square, a great space for Collinsville's future. And... Just off the square's turf, Cold Herald's old-fashioned scooped ice cream gelato, house-made recipes, and premium-sourced product. 
If you're over 21, ask about the good stuff at Cold Harold's. Watch Collinsville grow. Harold Square and Cold Harold. Two great new additions, only in Collinsville, Illinois. Back to action as Henson sends that ball out to midfield. It was Adam Reiniger, and it was a cramp. He's walked off under his own power, so I'm sure we'll see him back here momentarily as soon as that cramp feeling goes away. You know, these these conditions are nearly identical to two years ago when we played triad in the opening. 100-degree days, and everybody in that game was going down with cramps. Yeah, I remember that game. Remember that? We Adam. had a lot of whistles in that yep. game for cramps. Adam, Braden, everybody was suffering with cramps that game. Yeah. Those are not fun. No. No. And once you get one in a game, it's hard. Now it seems like Mahat is holding his calf over here on the sideline. He's got a there cramp. There you go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> this is how it happened two years ago, man. Yeah, we're going to stop the clock once again. And once again, we're going to have an injury timeout. So once again, we'll go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for good food, good times, and good people? Look no further than the bridge in Caseyville. Just over the bridge from the Cahawk Stadium, Bridge Inn features a friendly and courteous staff that serves up the coldest drinks and the best food in the Metro East. Lunch and dinner is available daily with a breakfast menu every Saturdays and Sunday morning. And don't forget about fantastic fish fry Fridays. Bridge Inn also features pool tournaments on most weekends and a gaming area for the over 21 crowd. Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Check them out at 519 North Main Street in Caseyville. Call for carryout orders at 618-344-3530. The best is yet to come at the Bridge Inn in Caseyville, 618-344-3530. We love to have you come work for the city of Collinsville. We have many positions available from CSUPS to full-time opportunities in many of our departments. Police and Fire to Gateway Center, Parks and Recreation, and City Hall. Our employees enjoy great benefits like comprehensive medical plans, paid time off, tuition reimbursement, and more. Visit the city's website, CollinsvilleIL.org, to apply and learn more about working city of Collinsville. So Landon Mahat, he's all right, just had another cramp, so we're back to action. And we'll get started here with a Chris Munoz kick. I don't know if uh, getting tangled up with the opponent's leg started that cramp. Yeah, you know, just flexing flexing your, your muscles in a, in a certain direction, with, and if you're not hydrated or staying hydrated, you know, that has the ability to pretty much shut that muscle down. Reiniger's still sitting over there. I don't know if he's trying to massage that out or what, but. <laughs> you have Reiniger and Mahat out. Those are two important pieces, man. Yeah. Here's a free kick. It's going to go right up and right into the hands of Delamano. It's well played, too. Sure was. Somebody's got to get ahead on that. You got to get. You've got to get in front of that goalkeeper. We are coming up on 10 minutes gone here in this second half. Collinsville trails two to one. There's Peterson. Gets a hold of the ball. Looked like he almost came up yep. with a cramp. He's limping now too. As he stays with it though. Triad trying to track the ball down in their offensive zone. They do so. And it's sent up by Hunt over mm. onto the far side. And a center pass, crossing pass. On, boys. Didn't quite make it all the way. And Doria will send it back down, trying to get Collinsville in a little offensive zone. Peterson's calling for the ball. He's, He's going to oh. get a little bit farther than the defender did. So no call there. Mm. As a Triad player goes down. And that is going to be off of the leg, and there goes another one. Ty Starko stuck his leg out to try to keep that ball in bounds, but he goes down, and he's laying out of bounds, so they're just going to let the teams keep on playing. So, oh, Collinsville's, playing field, a, so. Collinsville's playing a man short. Yeah, he's off the field, so there's no reason for him to blow the whistle. So, Collinsville's down a man. As they try to wrestle the ball away, they do so, and then a whistle is... It's going to be a foul called against Triad. And now they're going to stop the clock as they come over here to deal with Ty Starko. Well played by this young man from Triad. Oh, yeah. Young man from Triad coming over to help his opponent out. Yep. There's Amanda Bauer trots across the field. She's trotted across the field so many times yeah. she might pull a cramp here. Whoever that kid is, parents, you, do, you did a good job. That would be Lance Stolfery, Jr. 
Starko <laughs> limping it off. This is this is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, this shows you, you know, halftime in conditions like this probably hurt you more than help you. Yeah. It allows those muscles to rest and relax. And then when you go back out and you, you know, put them back under stress, it's tough. It is. 29.03 left to play here in the second half. And we've already had, what, four stoppages in the second half? Yeah. Yeah. This all due Doesn't to cramps. Doesn't bode well for the Cahawks right now. So Collinsville, they send the ball back into play. Up to midfield it goes. Gosh. And they couldn't contain Mikey. it. First touch. Good Mikey Suarez. And over on the far side, knocked out of bounds over there by T.J. Carter. Mikey's got to do a better job with that first touch. Keep that ball close, and then you can change direction as soon as you get that first touch and move. Not going to get any easier for Collinsville. Their next game is Saturday, Saturday against today. Chatham Glenwood, and they were super sectional champions last year. Yep, yep, good team. Loose ball, picked up by Triad. Started one way, heads the other way off of the back heel there of Caden Lutz. Mm, excuse me. Settled down. Borm couldn't settle it down. It goes over to Carter. Carter will get it out of there. A little bit of breathing room now for Collinsville. Off of the chest of Reed Hefferin. And Triad turns with it once again. Here is Jack Bagwell. Bagwell sends it over here to this near side now for Stauffer. Stauffer, he'll send the ball up onto the foot of Braden Kelly. Kelly being hassled there by Giovanni Mann, but Collinsville couldn't come up with it as Triad pretty much having their way with the ball right now. Yeah. Gibson Hunt now able to move up in the play with Adam Reiniger out. He doesn't have to play man marker, and he can now take on more of that attacking midfield role that he's... He's accustomed to. Yeah, I believe uh, Mahat and Reiniger are still out. Mm -hmm. My ice cold Mountain Dew is no oh. longer ice cold. There's a there's a mistake right there. So Triad goes up three to one on another mistake by the Cahawks. Collins has got to learn to attack in the air. I mean, they, they simply have to learn how to attack the ball in the air. And until they do so, they're going to struggle. Yeah. Three to one now, Collinsville Trail. So an uh, uphill battle is more uphill. Now, this should be humbling for these boys. Well, luckily, there's a whole season to go. I know. I mean, Triad lost the first game Win last it. year and then only lost three more the rest of the year. Yep. Things happen. You learn from them. You correct the mistakes. You move yep. on. I know. Out to midfield. Off of the head of one of the Cahawk players. It's going to take Come a roll all the way down to Henson. He'll pick it up inside the box. And when you don't have your key players out there, it makes it that much more difficult. Mm -hmm. Through midfield it goes. Trying to track that ball down was Carranza. He couldn't. Peterson trying to track it down, but that ball will be sent back over to Delamano, and he'll send a low screamer out of there. Now Triad trying to track it down in their defensive zone, and that's exactly what they do. Ball popped up. There was Compton off of his head. He'll send it up the line. And Suarez with it. Back out to the defense. Compton sends the ball into the offensive zone, trying to find Peterson. Peterson couldn't get there. Ball finds the midfield circle area. Here is Borm. First touch there, Borm. And Suarez over to Carter. Carter in front of the triad bench. Puts on a pretty good move. And the ball gets knocked away. Triad comes up with it right before it goes out of bounds. Borm steps in front. Does a nice job there and gets the ball up to Mann. Man sends the ball out to midfield, but Triad picks it off. Man tries to return the favor, and he finally does so. Back out to midfield now to Munoz. Munoz, he'll send the ball up, and you know where that's going. send it right over to Hunt. Didn't get it past anyone. Triad in the offensive zone once again. 
Around over the left side of the box, and that one's popped up into the air, and that is going to be a goal kick restart coming up here for the sophomore goalkeeper, Brayton Henson. My shirt soaked. It looks like mine I too. looks like I just came out of the pool with a shirt on. No, mine too. <laughs> Every once in a while, you got a little breeze coming, but man, that American flag out there—I haven't seen it move once. Nope. Henson sends a low one back out to midfield. It's sent right back to where it came from, and Henson Gosh. has to react kind of quickly. Reiniger, I can tell, still working over there with the, I don't know, what do you call that, that bar? The rolling G, pin? Rolling pin, something. Yeah. Yep. Trying to roll that cramp out. He wants to get back in. You know he does. Sure he does. I do not see, I don't know where Mahat is over there, but. God, you position yourself to the ball. Saw where uh, Edwardsville lost to Springfield in their opener the other night. They did. One to one nothing. nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got them next week. Yeah. I do believe I'll have that game. I'm sure you will. And Monday, I was going to do the uh, volleyball game, but I got to help the guys get on their very first JV football game. That starts at 6 p.m., so I'm going to help them out instead of uh, doing the volleyball game. There will be more volleyball down the road. Sure. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Glasses are sliding off the end of my nose. I tell you what, it's been a tough week to wear glasses, man. You uh, are inside in the air conditioning, and you come out into the steam, and they fog up. Chance for Collinsville, but Peterson couldn't finish. He calls for the ball quickly. He wants to throw in quick. Or Should be a corner. corner. Corner kick, first corner kick of the game for Collinsville. And they didn't really do a corner kick. They did a corner pass, on, cutting it up to the middle. Out in front, Suarez gets it back over now to Peterson. Peterson pops it up into the box off of the head of Doria, trying to track it down before it goes over the end line, was man, but Giovanni could not get there first. We do not have anybody willing to sell out on those balls in the air inside the box. And we got big kids, Juan Carlos, big kid. Yeah. Enrique, big kid, go get it. Try it, sends it back to midfield. Takes a triad bounce, and Compton will do the smart thing and just send it back over to Henson. Henson got it out of there just before he was approached by a pair of triad knights. <clears throat> Excuse me. Out to Borm. Borm threads the needle into the middle, gets the ball up, and Collinsville trying to make a move here. Here is Doria. He'll send it over to where there isn't anyone wearing purple and white, but Compton finds the ball, and then he gets tripped up. Collinsville will have a free kick from about 30 yards out. I'm not sure why he didn't think that was a foul. It was. You always try to plead your case, though, don't you? Sure. Kick. Nothing. Nope. Nothing on it. It was on goal, but that was about the extent of it. That one's popped up. I don't think that uh, Delamano meant to do that. 21 and a half minutes to go, so we'll have a water break for the players coming up here in about 90 seconds or so. Ball thrown in, Cahawks trail three to one. Then they run into each other. Over it goes now for Morales. Morales Gosh. sends it over to Mann. Mann couldn't stay on the ball, so Triad takes over. They'll send it up. It's picked off there by Carzana and sent up onto the foot of Chris Munoz. Munoz quicker, boys. lost the ball. Here is Borm. Borm sends the ball up to midfield for Mann. Man, trying to send it over to Peterson, but. He's playing the wrong guy. He needs to play it to TJ Carter. Peterson did a pretty good job of keeping that ball in front of him, though. He was stepped in front of by the defender. Borm sends it over, and it finds the foot once again of Morales. Morales sends it over here to Doria. Doria finds Trey Peterson. Peterson has got a couple of defenders in front of him, now a triple team in front of him. And Can't do it all. One of those guys stuck a foot out there, and the ball ricocheted off of it. Here is Compton. Compton sends it over here to the near side now for Morales. Morales sends the ball up once again for Mann. Back to the midfield circle for Borm. And Borm sends the ball up, but defender steps right in front of him. And then a loose ball over here on this near side sideline. 
taken care of by Morales, who finds Compton. Compton, right between a couple of defenders, gets the ball back. Maybe Compton should move up and play forward. <laughs> Need somebody that's willing to attack. 20 minutes to go as the ball is at midfield. That's not a good ball, Borm. And they'll send the ball up and over toward the sideline it goes, and then out of bounds it goes, and that's probably going to be the water break, and that's exactly what it is. Timeout coming your way. We'll be back in just a moment on the Cahawks Sports Network. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition in Pontoon Beach provides complete commercial, industrial, and residential demolition and excavating services. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is family owned and operated by former Cahawks since 1980 and have over four decades serving the Metro East. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is your choice for quality and experienced work at a reasonable price. Schaefer's just jobs of any size, whether digging for water and sewer lines, site preparation, or building demolition. Schaefer's can do it all. Schaefer's Excavating and Demolition also sells backfill, topsoil, loam, and other materials. Licensed, bonded, and insured, from earth moving and land clearing to building and demolition and road construction to septic and sewer system work. Call the experienced crew at Schaefer Excavating and Demolition, 618-931-6237. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from other coaches, teachers, and mentors. Jason Ragg, your Benjamin F. Edwards financial advisor, understands this. That's why Jason Ragg is a proud supporter of your Collinsville Cahawks and the Cahawks Sports Network, as well as the Cahawks Educator of the Month Award. For all of your investment needs, see financial advisor and investment vice president Jason Ragg at the Benjamin F. Edwards office in Edwardsville at 1012 Plummer Drive, or call Jason Ragg at 618-307-7048, or visit BenjaminFEdwards.com. Benjamin F. Edwards, members SIPC. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Lottie's Cafe offers food, cocktails, and gaming in a great atmosphere highlighted by fast and friendly service. Lottie's Cafe also offers a unique menu that features soups and salads, sandwiches and paninis, pizza and flatbreads, appetizers and desserts, as well as breakfast. That's right, we said breakfast. Unique breakfast items such as a breakfast stromboli, a breakfast BLT, and breakfast burritos. Lottie's also offers creative cocktails, a wine bar, the coldest beer around, and a video gaming area for those 21 and older. And don't forget the Lottie's Cafe gift certificates. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Check them out online at Lottie'sCafe.com, on Facebook, or in person in the Strip next to the Walmart Neighborhood Market. Or call Lottie's Cafe at 618-223-8256. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Back to action after the mandatory water break. Collinsville trails 3-1. to one. We're halfway through the second half. And the Cahawks have some work to do, but what do we have, another... Injury timeout? No, they're cramping over there now. Yeah. It's their turn. Yep, just on the playing surface, too, mm -hmm. so they have to stop the clock and call a timeout. This is where this is where we're going to find out how much depth Collinsville has on this roster. we got to have more people step up, be able to fill some roles when players go down like they are now, but... I knew coming into the season, depth was going to be a question mark. Yeah. Back to action. And Triad in control of this game. They lead by two goals. And time is running thin for the Cahawks to mount a comeback. Throw in coming up here. Mikey for Suarez. Check in, Mikey Suarez. Joey Morales. And that ball has popped up and sent out of bounds again. That almost made it into the stands. New ball thrown in, we're back to work. Suarez couldn't contain that one. And now a high fly to Compton. Compton off of his head, Nobody back out there. toward midfield. Triad finds the ball once again. Drew Noy, first time I've called his name since I mentioned starters. Yeah. Collinsville. Trying to work on it, and a takedown of Chris Munoz. Free kick coming up for Collinsville. He'll just send it over to the far side now for Carter. Carter will send it back up to midfield for Suarez. Back and forth, they'll play for a while. Mm. This time, Suarez mm. got stepped in front of. Loose ball, sent back to Compton. 
Compton will send the ball all the way back down into the get your offensive lines up. zone. Get your lines up, Purple. There is Trey Pearson trying to track it down. Reiniger is not on the ground anymore working on his mm -mm. I'm cramp. He's done. He's probably done for the night. No sense in making it worse, right? Right. And I haven't seen Mahat. No, nope, haven't seen him either. I think they're all Somebody on the bench now. Somebody else is down. Yeah, right Munoz. in front of right in front of the Kayhawk bench. Chris Munoz is down, and he's still in bounds. But referee lets him play as Triad moves the ball up. Another opportunity, but Henson is going to come out and grab that one. And I don't think the referee mm -hmm. knows yet well. that there's a Collinsville Kayhawk player down right in front of their bench. So they'll keep on playing. Good. Good turn. Collinsville gets it up. Here's Peterson. Well, they didn't blow the whistle, so our uh, player that was down got back up, and he's back in the game now. Yeah, that's Chris Munoz. Chris and he Munoz. was struggling over here on this left side a few minutes ago. Like, he was start. you could tell he's starting to cramp up. Yeah. Ball down. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. Come on, TJ. Can't lose it here, buddy. I think we've had almost 100 people watching this game. That's a pretty high number for soccer because of the heat. There's a shot, and that one's in. Four to one in favor of Triad from a long ways away. And the Knights take a commanding four to one lead. <laughs> wow. I believe that was Drew Noy. No. Starts with the cramp of TJ, but we can't lose the ball there. Ryan Kafer. Yep. Four to one. You never know what you're going to expect in the first game of the season, but I wasn't expecting this. You and me both, brother. Yeah. You and me both. With tri everything that Triad lost last year. Yeah. Granted, I knew we lost, you know, pieces as well, but I did not expect this. No. Such is the nature of high school sports. Yep. It's disappointing. You think, you think the other teams lost more than you did, and here's the other team taking it to you. So an unfortunate turn of events here for Collinsville tonight. Not the way they wanted their home opener to go after all the waiting and the hand wringing to see if we were even going to play this game or not. Right. And here you got 15 minutes left. Yeah. Coach Lugie's gone deeper into his bench. Senior Juan Gutierrez, first varsity appearance ever as a senior. Over on the far side, Peterson trying to wrestle the ball away. He can't. Collinsville gets to that midfield. They'll send the ball over, but it was well passed and well in front of Juan Carlos Doria. Mikey Ortiz enters the game, number 16. Clearing the bench. Getting some of these uh, players that Get it off your foot. We're going to see a lot of varsity action, but they uh, are seeing some now. Because JV didn't play. They canceled that game because it was just too hot to play that one in the sunshine. So some of the JVers are going to take their turn getting into this one. Some of them played both JV and varsity, so give those guys some work in before Collinsville plays again Saturday. Triad, they play on Saturday as well. They play versus O'Fallon, a night game. Triad's home opener Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Collinsville's game Saturday is an 11 a.m. game from Chatham. Ball over on the far side into the Triad bench. 14 minutes to go here in this second half. Mm, 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 mm. It's depth, I'm telling you. Yeah. Triad sends the ball up, blocked out there momentarily by 
Joey Morales. And a loose ball at midfield picked up from Morales' 22 to Triad's 22, Corey Warren. All the way over on the far side, coming around the corner, just outside the box, sent it in the middle, and there is Collinsville using a head to get that ball out of there. Back to midfield. Nice leave over there for Peterson. He tries to get past his defender, but that defender pushes him all the way out of bounds. It's going to go against Peterson. Yeah, it is. Now Peterson's uh, down over on the sideline. Yeah. He's probably got a leg cramp. Now yeah, it doesn't appear to. Maybe he just got a little bit of a banged up knee there as he went down. Collinsville is going to make more substitutions here as Peterson's night is probably over now. So Peterson, Mahat, Reiniger, Paul Munoz. out of the game, Munoz. Reiniger and Mahat have not come back into the game. And I doubt Peterson will come back in now after that. So Collinsville trails four to one. A little less than 12 and a half minutes to go. Another whistle will stop the action. I don't remember in, in my son's four years here, us getting beat like this. No. Four, but by three goals. It just, it just hasn't happened in the last, you know, three years. Yeah. Collinsville tried to get that ball up there. There was like five triad knights back on the defensive side, though, so even if they would have got it through, probably wouldn't have went very far. Another ball out of bounds right in between the benches. Collinsville will throw it in. Compton, one of the few remaining starters still out there. Yeah, I only see uh, your defenders, Borm, Compton, Mo uh, Morales. Yeah, Doria. Doria, that's it. Yeah. And, of course, Henson and goal. And Henson and goal. Triad, they have the lead and they have the ball. They don't bring it up field. Send it over here to the near side. And there's another cramp. Down goes Joey Morales. Now we're going to have a... Well, the referee's not going to stop the clock. He's going to go over and check on him. Yep, now they're going to stop the clock. All right, clock stop. We'll take a break as well. We're back here in just a moment on the Kayhawk Sports Network. The Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been a proud supporter of KayhawkSports.com and the Kayhawk Sports Network from day one. Since 1934, the Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been providing women in the community an opportunity to make a difference with fundraisers and projects, all that go towards helping the needy in Collinsville. If you would like any information on any event sponsored by the Collinsville Junior Service Club, head to Facebook. Type in Collinsville Junior Service Club and then click on the event tab. We thank the Collinsville Junior Service Club for their continued support of the Kayhawk Sports Network and KayhawkSports.com. I want to remind you of the Junior Service Club's golf scramble set for Sunday, October 1st at Arlington Greens Golf Course in Granite City. For more information, call 618-210-7273. Back to action here. Todd Duke, Brett Borm along with you. Glad you're with us for the first game of our 2023-2024 season. Not going the way that we wanted it to, but it's a long season, and Collinsville will rebound from this, and the weather will change. It won't be this hot and steamy for the rest of the year, that's for sure. And Collinsville can learn from this. That's what you do when you lose a game. You learn from it. You move on. This is precisely why summer workouts are extremely important. Having your body conditioned, in shape for these type of elements. Yeah. Zach Roseman chimes in, says that uh, Collinsville hasn't lost this bad since they suffered a 4-1 loss to Columbia in 2021, two and a half years ago. I don't even remember that game. That's the COVID year, right? Uh, well, 2020, they got in before COVID hit. But, yeah, the next year they played that, what, spring season? Right. Yeah. We don't count that year, do we? 
We all try to forget about yeah, it. I try to forget about it. I don't know. But, man, I don't even remember that game. That was, if it was 21, that was our super sectional season. Yeah. We are at nine minutes to go here in this second half. Collinsville trailing four to one. Whistle on the play, foul against Collinsville. It'll be a free kick coming up here for Triad as the uh, referee comes over to talk to Juan Carlos Doria. Says, don't do that again, okay? Back to action. And midfield is where we are. Come on, Juan, you gotta give the ball up, buddy. You cannot dribble four people. That's not gonna help this team. Nope. Eight minutes to go. Goodness. Oh, goodness. Come on, purple. <laughs> Going through my commercials, it looks like I forgot to load a couple of them. My apologies. Seven and a half minutes to go. Zach says, yes, it was the COVID spring season. Okay. Thank you, Zach. Yeah. That's when they played in March. <clears throat> Excuse me. That was a messed up year. Christian. As I said, we try to forget about that. Rodrigo Hernandez Mendoza, the sophomore forward, checks into the game for Collinsville. They'll want to forget about this one, too. Oh, gosh. Misplayed that ball. Totally Here comes Triad. That one. Triad sends it up into the box, and then it eludes, and a whistle on the play just as Jack Bagwell was trying to track that down. Call against Triad, so Collinsville is going to have a free kick, but it's going to be from mm. way downtown over in front of all pro tees. Quiet. Yeah, it is. That it is. Triad should feel good. They should feel good about this win. Starting their season off exactly the way we did last year. Well, if we can have the same results that Triad had last year and only lose three more the rest of the way, make it all the way to a super sectional, I think Collinsville would take that. Oh, I think we would. But yeah. There's a lot of things to clean up here. Oh, yeah. A lot of things to clean up. And knowing Coach Lugie the way I do, he'll get it done. Yep. Nobody going to the short ball. Nobody paying attention. They got it out of there, though. But Triad back in position to take over once again. I mean, and that they do. Whole host of bodies, and here is from the outside a shot toward the goal, and oh, that one Borm. just oh, Borm. went wide. That was close to being an own goal yeah. as Lance Stolfer put one right in front of the goal line and out of bounds. Collinsville got lucky there. Corner kick number five Look for Triad. That. that one goes over the goal. They know how to attack the air. End of story. We're back at you tomorrow from Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium in some air conditioning. A little Lady Calc volleyball for you as they got on the winning track tonight by beating Jerseyville two to one. That game is gonna be a little bit later as well. Apparently Highland had some transportation issues. So instead of the JV game getting underway at 4.30, it's a JV 5.15 start. So we'll be on with the varsity game right after the JV game ends. And then, of course, no Friday night lights this Friday. That's nope. going to be Saturday, Saturday morning sunshine. Yep. Collinsville at Bell Bell East for week number one of the football season. 
Only regular season loss of the year last year for the football team was against Belleville East in game number one right here on this field. And Collinsville didn't lose again until round number two of the playoffs up in Chicago against Brother Rice. So the Cahawks looking to return the favor to Belleville East just as Triad was looking to return the favor here against Collinsville on the soccer pitch. Four minutes to go here in this one. Collinsville trailing four to one. Triad, two goals in the first half, two goals in the second half. First goal came about 10 minutes in, and then Adam Reiniger tied it up about 10 minutes later, and that has been all the goal scoring for Collinsville. Matter of fact, there hasn't they've, been a uh, shot. Yeah, they've had four shots yeah. on goal this whole game. Form's coming up limping himself a little bit. There's a lot of cramping going on out there. Most of it's on Collinsville's side. Yeah, I don't understand it. I don't understand why it's so one-sided. Free you know. kick coming up here for Triad from about 30 yards away, all the way over on the far sideline. Popped up right in front off of a head, and it stays inside the box. Collinsville will get there first and chase it down. They'll kick it out of bounds, and we'll have a throw in over here on the near side sideline. I don't know how you respond to this in training tomorrow. I don't know if you let your, bo your kids' bodies recover after, after elements like this. I don't know what you do. Yeah, because you've got Thursday and Friday before you have to play again on Saturday morning. Right. I would think rest for a day, then get back to practice on Friday. But I don't know. They got to hydrate. Yep, that's for sure. Two and a half minutes to go. An 11 a.m. start for your... Collinsville Cahawks soccer team mm. from Chapham on Saturday. Of course, we will be at Belleville East an hour before that for the kickoff of the football season. I mean, right now you have a JV team out there. Yeah, pretty much. And it looks like it. <clears throat> Back over onto the far side sideline. We will uh, have our next soccer match for you in six days as Collinsville travels back home after their trip to Chatham right here against Edwardsville Tuesday night at 630. And by then, temperatures are supposed to be in the low to mid 80s. That'll be a nice refreshing change of pace. Hope there's less humidity. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Mm -hmm. Triad with the Don't lead and the ball. As we approach one minute to go here in this one. One minute remaining second half, one minute. Chris Keller letting everybody know there's one minute left. And Collinsville will fall to 0-1 to start the year. And they'll look to rebound Saturday morning on the road. Who are you playing that to? Ooh, man. Circle all the way around. Get it up to Carranza. Carranza trying to find Gutierrez. Couldn't do it. And over on the far side of the field, picked up over there by Lance Stauffer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Triad fans are on their feet giving their team a round of applause as we count down the final seconds of this one. Well, Mr. Borm, I know it wasn't the outcome that you were hoping for or I was hoping for or anybody wearing purple and white was hoping for. But Collinsville is going to have to forget about this one and move on. They are. They are. They're just going to have to shake it off. They're going to have to rest, recover, hydrate, come back and beat Chatham on Saturday. All right, man. Well, you have fun out in Chatham on Saturday, and I will talk to you on Tuesday. Yes, sir. All right. That is Brett Bohr. My name is Todd Duke. No postgame show tonight. We're all drenched in sweat, and we have to get up and go to work in the morning. So we're going to call this one a little early. We appreciate Everybody that took the time out to watch, and this is just the first game of the year, so 
Hopefully you're with us for a lot more to come this year. And a uh, big thank you to Coach Rob Lugi for joining us in the pregame show. A big thank you again to Clay Smith joining us at halftime. And as always, we thank Mr. Brett Borm for hanging out with us and providing the color commentary. 4-1, to one, Collinsville loses their season opener. And until tomorrow from Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium, volleyball action as Collinsville takes on Highland. My name is Todd Duke. Everybody have yourselves a fantastic rest of your evening.